Dr. And this is one of my favorite trees, the Southern Magnolia. It's big, it's sexy, and it's 100% Dixie. Now the first thing you'll notice about this tree is the leaves. Real dark, shiny, thick leathery leaves. Um, very elegant looking on the top. On the bottom it's brown felt. It's brown and fuzzy. My favorite time of the year to engage the southern magnolia is early summer when they flower. The flowers on the plant are gigantic, up to a foot across. Supposedly you can see them from a mile away. These large flowers help give the southern magnolia its scientific name, Magnolia grandiflora, large flower, grandiflora. This is one of the largest flowers native to North America. The flowers are unusual in another way though. They have sex twice, but I'll tell you about that later. The Magnolia name is in honor of the famous French botanist Pierre Magnol. Magnol was a medical doctor, a physician, but he actually liked plants a lot more. He is quite famous actually for inventing the concept of the botanical family. You know how pumpkins and squash and cantaloupes all look alike? That's because they're all in the same plant family, and Magnolia helped organize plants into these families. Magnolia grandiflora only grows naturally in the lower southeastern corner of the United States, like from Florida to Texas. You find it a lot around swamps and lakes and wet areas, but there are a couple hundred other species of magnolia that grow around the world, like in the Caribbean, South America, and Asia. Yeah, but you've never really experienced southern magnolia until you smelled it. The flower is just fantastic. Um, eat your heart out, Yankees. The function of this lemony perfume is not just to make northerners jealous. It's to attract beetles. Yep, it's the beetles that pollinate the southern magnolia flowers. Beetles smell that perfume and invade the flowers to collect pollen. Now, beetles are thought to be the first kind of insects that evolved to be involved in plant pollination. Magnolia fossils go back a hundred million years ago, so they were around at the time of the dinosaurs and the early insects. There aren't very many flowering plant species that go back as far as the magnolia. One of the interesting things about southern magnolia is its sexuality. Of course, that all takes place in the flowers. You see these huge white petals. Now, technically, they're not petals, because some of them are sepals, and uh, botanists call these tepals. When you can't tell the petals from the sepals, they're called tepals with a T. And inside the tepals are the actual sex parts of the flower. The female parts, called the pistils, are located at the top of the structure. It sort of looks like a pineapple. The male parts, called the stamens, are located below the pistils. Now there are a lot of characteristics of this flower which botanists consider ancient, very old. The large flowers, the elongated sex parts, the superior ovary, sounds dirty, the numerous flower parts and their spiral arrangement. Another primitive trait of magnolia flowers is their bisexuality. They have both male and female parts on each flower. Now there are a lot of flowers like that, but what's unusual here is that the two genders are separated by time. The whole idea is to encourage cross-pollination because that reduces inbreeding. Magnolia reduces inbreeding by having its sex parts mature at different times. On the first day of flowering, only the female parts of the magnolia flower are mature and receptive. No pollen is made on that first day. You can see the immature male parts here, not producing pollen yet. On the next day, the pollen is produced, but by then the female parts are not receptive anymore. So every time a southern magnolia makes seed, it's probably the result of pollen being carried from one flower that's one day older to this younger flower. Older flowers will have darkened tips on the pistils and the stamens will have fallen off. Yeah, so isn't that typical? The young flowers are the ones that get all the sex. And the men are always one day late. Yeah, so there you have it, the botanical glory of the South. Next time you see a Magnolia grandiflora in bloom, make sure you take a closer look. Get in there and take a whiff of its perfume. 
and um, amaze your friends with what you know about its sexuality and see if you can find some beetles. Thank you.